Hey guys, Quarks here. Hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is my ZX Spectrum Plus 48K. Now, this is the 48K I repaired in a previous video where it had a dodgy membrane and uh, it was only showing up as 16K. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below if you want to see that repair. Now, what I've later found out with this Spectrum is it doesn't work with my DivMMC Future. Now, I know this Div M MC Future works perfectly fine with my Plus 2B, works absolutely fine, but with this ZX Spectrum Plus 48K, it just doesn't want to know. Now, I think I know what the problem is. Um, I think I'm one of the unfortunate ones where the Z80 uh, in this Spectrum is missing its M1 line. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in I'm gonna hook up my scope and we're gonna take a look to see if I'm I am actually missing that M1 line and if I am what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a CPU swap uh, on this spectrum just to prove to you that the div MMC future is working perfectly fine I have my Sinclair ZX spectrum 128k plus 2b out I have the div MC future plugged in to the expansion slot so what I'm gonna do now is power on and you'll see this thing intralize there you go see the green light flashing what I'll do now is I'll pull up and press the menu button this button here this red one turns red and then you press it and you get the menu now I'm just gonna load again quickly Let's go for 1942, which is there. And as you can see, the Div MMC future works perfectly fine with my Sinclair ZX Spectrum 128 plus 2B. What I want to do is show you what happens when I have the Div MMC future plugged in and I actually power uh, the system if I plug power into the system, memory cards in uh, and I just get a, a red LED and if I pan up you'll see it just boots straight to the spectrum screen now if I press the button it should should bring up a menu uh, but all what happens is it just resets the system I'll show you uh, there you go, all what happens is it just resets the system now that works the same for both buttons uh, what should happen is I think this turns green uh, if I remember correctly and then you press the button and then you get the the menu pop up um, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll power off and then power on again and you'll see I get absolutely no menu show up uh, it just boots straight to the uh, Sinclair screen so yeah what I'm going to do now is I'm going to whip the lid off this thing I'm going to fire up my scope and I'm going to take a look at the M1 line um, on the CPU uh, to see what it looks like to get in the Spectrum Plus case, um, there's eight screws you need to remove. There's three on this side, there's one here, one here, one here. There's one at the bottom of the case just here. There's another three on this side, however, I'm missing one because I put a reset switch in my uh, case because it was missing. So there's one here, there's normally one just here, and there's one here as well, and the final one is here remove those and you should be able to remove the top case but I'm going to show you how you remove the top case because there are a couple of ribbon cables you need to be careful of now to get in the spectrum plus case uh, it's actually very easy but there's a technique that you have to use um, do not be opening it like this or like this uh, what you want to do is grab it like this and move it forward and what you'll see is you'll see two ribbon cables can you see them there's one there and there's one just there now what you need to do is hold this up you need to grab uh, the cable like this and just pull it straight up and it will pop straight out and you need to do that for this one and this one and then what you can do is you can actually remove the top of the case with the keyboard connected I've hooked up this Z80 to look at its M1 
and I can pretty much confirm that it's uh, it's missing. Um, if we take a look at the blue probe, this is connected to the M1 line on the Z80, that's uh, pin 27. Now what I've done is I've just hooked up a yellow probe, uh, which is going to the M request, which is um, pin 19, uh, just as a reference, just to show you what a valid signal looks like. Now if we take a look at my scope, obviously the, the, the yellow line is the M request, and you can see it's perfectly valid, looks nice, defined. Um, but if we look at the M1, which is the blue, yeah, that's uh, that doesn't look right. You know, it's not even registering as a volt. Um, I'm on one volt per, per division, so that's what half a volt. Yeah, that's not valid. That's uh, that's missing. So yeah, I think we can confirm that this Z80 is definitely missing its M1. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire up my desoldering station and I'm going to suck out this Z80 uh, and replace it with a, a known good one. That's our old Z80 desoldered. What I'm going to do now is get a socket in there so we can fit our new Z80. I have the Forty pin socket in place. Now I have to make a confession. I didn't have any forty pin sockets, so what I had to use was two uh, twenty-four pins. So I, I used the full twenty-four pin socket, and then I just cut six off the other twenty-four pin socket. Now you can do that. Um, what you need to be uh, wary of is you need to make the gaps the same where they join. Um, because if you just bang two together, you'll have a bigger gap. So you need to just make sure that you, you gap and you just take a file and file them down uh, until the gaps look even. But yeah, you can do that. You can use different size sockets if you in a pinch and you don't have any correct size sockets. Some of you may be asking where I'm going to get my Z80 from. Um, simple, I'm going to get it from this master system. Um, now, some of you may be familiar with this master system board. It's the dead master system board with one of these customs has failed. Uh, and I'm just using it for spares now. Uh, and you can see where I, I nixed the RAM uh, <laughs> to fix a, a previous master system on my channel. What I'll do is I'll put a link to that video if you want to see it. Um, I've also gone ahead and nicked the reset switch uh, and fixed another uh, Mega Drive uh, with that. So yeah, this is just a, a spares board. Um, but if we look in this top corner what do we have we have a four megahertz z80 so i'm going to desolder this and this is going to be my donor z80 for our spectrum i've gone ahead and desoldered the z80 from this master system just put them side by side here's the old one here's the new one let's get the new one into the spectrum donor cpu is in the socket what I want to do now is a quick power on test just to make sure everything's okay now the reason I want to do a quick power on test is because I haven't got the heat sink on there because you know if there's something wrong I don't really want to be putting this on and off on and off just so I can get the CPU out so what I want to do is just give it a quick power on test so I'm gonna plug in power see if we get anything and um, we got a boot so yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Let's remove the power. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is get this heat sink back in there. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll hook up my scope again and see if we've got M1 back on the CPU. I'm set up how I was before. I have the blue probe going to pin 27, which is M1. And just for reference, I have the yellow probe going to pin 19 which is M request uh, and it's good news guys I'll show you on my scope you'll see the difference it's night and day difference so yeah there you go top ones M request and as you can see there's our M1 it's back baby so yeah that confirmed it that old CPU was definitely missing its M1 so yeah, what I'm going to do now is uh, pop in my 
div mmc future in there uh, and see if it fires up hopefully it should fire up now what I've decided to do is give it a quick test with the lid off um, that's because if there's anything wrong with it I don't want to keep putting the lid on and off um, you know with those tails on the uh, keyboard membrane being fragile I don't want to be snapping them so um, yeah I've decided to give it a quick test with the lid off um, what I have is the div MMC plugged into the expansion port I've got the memory card all plugged in what I'm going to do now is point up at the TV and I'm going to power on and see what we get and there you go it's booting winner winner chicken dinner so if I press that we should get the menu now and we do there's a menu so yeah there you go looks like we've fixed it with a CPU swap because we was missing the M109 uh, what I'm going to do now is get all this back together and then I can wrap up the video and we're all bottled back together so let's get some power in this thing and let's see if we can load again Begin in. and as you can see we get some activity and we get the menus and let's press the menu button and as you can see I'm in the menu let's load again let's load jet set willy Should be this one. Oh, there we go. As you can see, it's now fully working. So yeah, just get rid of that. It's a bit annoying. <laughs> so yeah, uh, what I would say, guys, if you if you buy one of these, and I highly advise you get one of these if you've got a Spectrum. Um, but if you get one of these that doesn't work in your Spectrum before you start thinking it's uh, this is the fault, um, actually. Test it out on a different spectrum because you may be one of those unlucky people where your M1 line is missing on your Z80 in your spectrum. So yeah, there you go guys. Hope you like this video. Please give it a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe. All the usual stuff. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Sweet. <laughs> Bloody Z80. <laughs> Catch you next time, guys. <laughs>